It's almost here, guys. It's almost here. Destiny 2 launches in three days, and I can't wait to get my small hands on it. It has been a very, very long wait. And since I'm so excited for Destiny 2, I can help myself when it came to spoilers. And uh, yes, I will be talking about most of the spoilers, but I will not talk about all of the perks for certain weapons or armor pieces, just the ones that seem cool or good or even terrible. Just outright terrible. From exotics to the end of the story, I will be talking about all of that. I will talk about it as much as I possibly can or can remember. That saying, I will only talk about the things that actually stood out and the things that are actually important. So strap in and listen or click off this video if you don't want any spoilers or don't want to listen to any spoilers. These are only my opinions on the spoilers and don't take them, you know, just take them lightly because they're my opinions, dude. Like, why would you give me crap for my opinions? So, the story. I heard that there are only 17 missions in the game according to the strategy guide. For Destiny 2 and 5 strikes in total. For 5 strikes in total? If that's true, then I'm very, very disappointed. Like, seriously, 5 strikes? Are, are you kidding me? There's supposed to be an overhaul of PvE activities, right? It, like, I think it's like 80 in total, including missions. Yeah, it's probably each individual patrol mission, what have you, but 5 strikes. Really? <laughs> wow, that, that that sucks. Hard, man. That really does. That sucks. Also, 17 mini missions. Considering that there is an actual story. A story with some plot holes. But a story in general. Instead of a half-assed adventure. Like Vanilla Destiny. With a lot more cutscenes. An actual, you know, personality to characters. Rather than just... Stoic voice actors that don't have any personality at all. Such as, you know, Dinklebot. Nolanbot is way better. Nolanbot is way, way better. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with 17 missions. The story looks interesting. And I wonder if I, you know, will actually, you know, get invested into the story. Rather than, you know, just an hour of doing pointless missions that don't really make sense to me. I wonder if we get a lot of questions answered in the story when we finish the story. But hey, who knows? The game's not out yet, so you know, who can tell? Only, only the future can tell. And in the story, apparently, Cade also loses an arm. And here's the here's the shocker guy. Here's the here's the big big reveal, guys. The traveler wakes up and starts a new golden age. Oh my god! Oh my god! The Traveler wakes up? I wonder what's the reason for the Traveler waking up? Uh, I mean, you know, it didn't wake up when Oryx got in our solar system. It didn't wake up when Crota was going to kill us and invade the Earth. But, you know, the Traveler's up and running, guys. And new Golden Age and such a happy ending. I mean, some people don't like a happy ending, but if it was for me, I, I guess I like it. I, I like happy endings. But I know there's more to come, so I don't know why we're having a happy ending right now, rather than, you know, more content. More possible content. Like, you know, I wonder if they if they didn't go with a happy ending, they could have just added more story. I, I'm not sure. I, I don't have my hands on the game, so... I guess we're just gonna have to see, man. But here's a theory that I had. What if the Golden Age is what caused the darkness to come to us in the first place? And caused it to collapse and just eat everything in its way and kill everybody and all that junk? The second DLC was supposedly leaked, but I, I, do, I don't know if it's true or not. It stated that we find out the truths, the, the secrets of why the collapse even happened in the first place. But hey, that's just a theory. And, uh, no. I, w I will not say it. So a happy ending is good for me, I guess. Because, you know, I I'm kind of a sucker for them. Like, I like happy endings. But I know it isn't the end. So there's, there's still plenty to come. There's more content coming. 
I'm just confused as to why we're having a happy ending now. Out of all times. So you think that would be the end of Destiny 2? Like the end end. That could be the end end, but uh, so people have said that it's going to be the actual story end. The vanilla Destiny 2 end. So, we're just going to have to see. That would be a perfect ending for the whole enti the entirety of Destiny 2. And then, you know, the darkness comes back and comes to kill us and all that stuff. Perfect ending. And perfect start for Destiny 3. For the darkness to come back. Which helped my theory, so... That'd be definitely something to invest in, Mudgee. That'd be a great idea. Damn, you could pay me for that, man. <laughs> if you use that, we'll sue you. I'm joking. Where am I? We'll see. How about we get on to those exotics? Go to any Destiny news channel, because I'm not a Destiny news channel. I'm just giving my two cents. Go to any Destiny 2 channel. And they will read off the list on all the exotic armor pieces. Bottom line, they all suck. I'm not kidding, guys. They all suck. I believe that two Warlock helmets reduce the cooldown of abilities by damaging or killing enemies with a certain element. But, like, there are two different elements for each individual exotic. I, I don't understand why they can't just, you know, I don't know why not just make it so that one exotic that applies to that perk and make it for all the elements for one exotic that doesn't make any sense to me that's kind of lazy to be honest and just that's that's just lazy no creativity you have a game with space magic and you make this perks of all the exotic armor pieces around basic perks we would probably see on a legendary i mean yeah sure there are some perks that do stand out i mean reloading your sub machine gun or something like that, I don't know. But like, it's not like super awesome perks that you would probably definitely use. For me, I used Wally Garrison in Destiny 1. That's, that's something that I would love to use. If, if Twilight Garrison came back in Destiny 2, you, you would see me use that every second of the game on my Titan. Like seriously, and a fit, I think it's Aphidian aspects, they're called? Aphidian? I don't know. But I always use that on my Warlock. I always use the bones on my hunter. But, uh, there's like no, like, uh, no exotic that grants one perk of the other tree on your current subclass at a time. Like, any perk, like any one that you want. Like, just one. It only takes one for any tree because, you know, limited subclass customization. So, only two trees, you know. It'd be great to tra maybe trade off. A perk, maybe? That'd be even better, too. Or, like, a, a weaker perk than that. Grants insert perk here for insert subclass here. Like, a specific perk, at least. Like, we saw in Destiny 1, like, a, there was Arms for Titan that, I believe, does, like, amplify. And, uh, the ones for Titan, the arms that, you, when you use your hammers, they explode and... There's no, like, exotic for that? What happened to that? That that's that was a good idea. Just because it's a sequel doesn't mean, like, you should take out the good perks that would probably, you know, help us in this game. And probably fix some of the problems in this game, too. I mean, to be honest, to be quite honest. But, uh, nope. Just, just basic uh, legendary tier perks, I guess. Just borderline exotic perks that you wouldn't see on the legendary but are so lame that they might as well be so you know they're not really too helpful i mean come on budgie you can you can do way better than that exotics are exotic for a reason not just for the looks you know but but the perks as well well forget it armor sucks but moving on to weapons they did good on these they they Really did good on these, I believe. Uh, the looks and the perks, everything. You got a shoddy that looks well, awesome. You got a doesn't look like a shoddy at all. I believe it like pushes like a enemy's back or something like that. And another shotgun penetrates targets, allowing for multiple uh, damage or something like that. I don't know. I didn't educate myself that much on the exotics, but I know that the exotics are worth it. They are good. 
And also Mida is back and can be paired with a uh, Mida mini tool. I think that's uh, some type of submachine gun or something like that. And for like a special combo bonus or something like that. It sounds cool. So to hear that there's uh, some exotic bonuses and with the legendaries to pair them up and give you even more uh, help in perks. Sounds great. Um, it's also the Graviton Lance. I think it's called Graviton's Lance, yes. Detonates targets. Uh, it has perfect recoil, except for the third shot in the burst. And the third shot in the burst um, does five times damage. Like, a lot of damage. Like, I, I, like the 500s. Yeah, that, that, that high of damage. That seems pretty... That's probably going to be my go-to exotic. Um, I don't know about the other exotics or how many uh, exotic weapons there are truly, but for sure, that's going to be one of my go-to exotics. Um, also, there's the rat side, which I forget the name of. No, it's rat theme, so I'm just going to call it the rat. It's a sidearm that allows you to do bonus damage if you and your fire team are also using it and are close by. It stacks up to six times. So imagine that in the raid, having a sidearm doing six times damage or something like that, and uh, it makes you invisible after killing an enemy and then immediately reloading. It's also, good job, Bungo. Good job. You didn't screw up on these weapons, so you did mess up the armor. Armor, armor pieces suck, but you know. Good job on the weapons. Can't wait to use the lance, though. The lance is going to be awesome. It's going to be my go-to. Love it. Lastly, let's talk about the Taking King subclasses. Uh, the last part of the spoilers, I guess. So, let's talk about these classes. I'm a little disappointed. They seem to be the exact same, with some extra perks. I thought there were going to be, like, some changes to them that would actually make them, you know, more exciting, but there's... There, there is not. There is not. That disappoints me. And with the lack of choosing the best perks from one tree and some in the other, we're stuck with one set, whether we like it or not, which also sucks. So it makes it even worse. Because Night Stalker and Viznades are on the same side as Quiver, it, it, um, that does not sound good to me. It's like they're mixing PvP with PvE again. Or then, you know, they, they know the perks for Night Stalker. I don't know why they're mixing the two. Like, seriously, come on, guys. I mean, Invis Nades on Quiver? Come on. And also, I think that the Orb Generation perk, either the pack or something like that, is also on that tree as well. Which, again, sucks. So, you know, that's disappointing. They really didn't need to change how the subclass customization worked. I don't know why they did it. That com seems completely unnecessary. That seems completely unnecessary. Oh, we're not done yet. There's, there's more. There's more. After we're done with the story, there are plenty of activities to do to level up. After we hit 260, we're going to need to complete weekly activities or milestones, I think that's what they call them, such as flashpoints, the nightfall, the raid, and more. Adventures are there also for us to dive deeper into the game story, but hopefully they'll be interesting enough to actually, you know, make us want to play them. So, I saw the examples of adventures in the EDZ gameplay, so... Hopefully, I mean, the one where you transfer explosives to a certain location to sabotage didn't seem like all that fun, but hopefully there will be more adventures with more things to them. But hold on, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. The game's not out yet. Will this be enough content for us until the first expansion? For me, maybe. I work, and we'll be, I'm probably borderline casual, probably borderline casual at this point. Um, well, she seems to be targeting the casuals anyway in hopes to, you know, draw them in because the people who didn't have time for Destiny 1 um, can actually get to Max Light in Destiny 2 if they go this route. I could be wrong, but adding fixed roles on Legendary seems like that's what they're going for. I'm fine with it because, as I said before, I'm borderline casual because of work and school, so only the future may tell. Also, the Crucible seems to be a dumbed-down bit as well, so... Uh, 
only one person can pick up power ammo, and the special weapons are now power and heavy weapons. I'm worried for the raid. How will DPS keep up? I, I really am worried about DPS. I can't have a triple tap sniper and the rocket launcher at the same time. Is that because of the crucible? Because people were complaining about, you know, special being overpowered? So they just scrapped the, the, the specials in general and kind of buffed them up, but made them so much more rare. Or was it Bungie's decision alone? It's a crucible had nothing to do with it. I don't know. Only the community will backlash and say, ah, Crucible's the fault for screwing up PvE again. Which is true for the past, but we don't know who Destiny 2. We haven't played it. Anyway, it's time to wrap up this video. In conclusion, Destiny 2 seems like a watered-down Destiny 1 DLC with bad exotic armor pieces, casual gameplay, and, well, partially centered around PvP, which is only speculation. Well, kind of saying it. I mean, it has happened before, so why wouldn't they keep doing it now? I mean, why in PvE are we using, you know, snipers in the power and ammo slot instead of secondaries, I don't know. It may seem that way, but I believe it to be an improvement. You know, they fixed some stuff that they made mistakes on while making other mistakes, you know? They... we... come up with ideas, the community. But Bungie's the big dog here, they make the game. They make the decisions. Although that doesn't, you know, apply to every single person, player, who ever plays the game. But it does benefit for most people, or what they're trying to target as most people. They're trying to make the game an improvement for everybody. But, you know, that just can't happen. Some things have to be dealt with and addressed. But we won't know until we play the game. All these opinions are coming mostly from what we heard or seen in trailers or the leaks, not what we've actually played. Changes can be made during the cycle of Destiny 2, but Bungie cannot satisfy all the players. That being said, I'm looking forward to Destiny 2 on Wednesday. Also, before I forget, before I forget, don't forget to check in with your game store, GameStop, anywhere, whatever store that you get your games at. If they're releasing the game, the day before, they they might be doing that. My GameStop will be giving out the pre-orders at 11 p.m. on Tuesday, September 5th. I live on the East Coast, and Bungie said that the game will be live at 12 a.m. Eastern Time. That means the same time as as Pacific. So like, if it's 12 a.m. and I'm getting on, I press like the button at the same time as somebody on the Pacific Coast is pressing the X button. It'll be 12 a.m. for me, and it'll be 9 p.m. for them but I will be playing the game at the same time as them. I'll be logging in at the same time as them. So, there was a big confusion on the forums about that. So, I just wanted to clear that up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment, like, and sub for more content, and then be sure to check in on my stream that I'll be doing either on September 6th or the night before for Destiny 2. So I said, I'm getting the game 11 p.m., downloading the game. Don't know when, probably, I'll be playing at 12 a.m. or something like that. But I will be doing like a silent stream or a quiet stream. So, so you can see all the content. So, hope you guys like this. Have a good one, Guardians. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.